everyone, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome to another tech tutorial. Today is the final installment of a three-part series of videos, so check out the other two in the description below, on the Adobe Spark Suite. Today we're going to talk about Adobe Spark Page, and this is a super simple and straightforward platform. It's incredible, and I'm just going to say it right now, the two incredible use cases that I see for this is one, having students curate content and learn how to create a dynamic experience beyond just text where they're using photographs and video and other elements to link out to resources and show how to create a really rich environment around information. But the second one is really interesting and it's experimental, but I think it addresses a challenge of portfolios. How can we create a portfolio for a student that lives on beyond our school? where I'm gonna graduate as a middle school student and this can move on to a high school. I'm gonna graduate high school and this can move on to college. Because if we're not creating content that's valuable enough for that next stage, I question the portfolio process. I really do. So let's get in, let's deep dive. I'm gonna to try to do this in five minutes or less and let's see what we can do. So right away, this is an example from a student second grade solar system project. And when you start to scroll, this is already populated, but you're gonna see these plus signs. And you hit these plus signs and you are able to choose between different media content options. And we're gonna go right with the first one, which is photo. And here it already is populated because I'm working in the design. And that's really nice that if you are working and searching, that it's keeping that search open as you're looking for different images that are relevant to that search. But if we go back, we see other options. This is the default view. I can upload my own photos here, right? or I can find free photos. And I think this is important because this is gonna help our students understand copyright use. For a elementary school student, they are not going to remember the intricacies of searching images and appropriate use. So instead of going that route, which is more appropriate for middle school or high school, I recommend you go with the positive. Find free photos. Hello students, these are photos that we have permission to use because we don't have permission to use photos anywhere that we find or everywhere that we find on the internet. So you go here and you search your photos and this is the space that allows for you to search any photo and choose any photo you want. Very simple, very straightforward. Once you choose a photograph, it's going to let you come up with the different options that you can use to add that media in. Now, right away, I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to show you something. I don't know if you noticed this. This student has chosen to create his solar system project based on his interest in the planets and not the order of them. Now, it is very difficult to move image content around, although you can right here. There's a move option. Guess what? Over here, there isn't a move option. Okay, there's a move option here, but as you see, you don't get to move the glide show wherever you want. And if you click down and hold on it, there is no way to move this around. That's really important for planning purposes. So if you expect your students to have a specific order and sequence to the design, you want to make sure that you have that right away. So that's just, that's just is what it is. So we are over here. And if student doesn't like something, delete it. If they want to add something different, you can add text. You can type the text. You can change the heading emphasis and quotes on the text. You can link the text. You can change and customize the theme if you are in an education version. And free upgrade for that. It'll be automatic if you're using your school account as a student or a teacher. You can add buttons that let the button link out to a specific source like NASA, because this is a solar system project. You can go and add in a video and you can embed a YouTube video or a Vimeo or an Adobe Spark video that you've created on your Adobe Spark platform project. Hit that plus sign again, photo grid, glide show, super straightforward. This is a curation platform. Students have to have their writing ready. They have to have their image and their content ready to go. There needs to be a plan. 
So if you have your list with what you're ready to write, students can write and create content on the iPad. They can create content on the web interface like I'm using right now. And this is just really straightforward. You wanna change the theme, you can change the theme. Beautiful themes, you can create your own theme, but I recommend having students just click a theme and be ready to go. You scroll through it, it's got this beautiful motion view, and you're just ready to go. This student created this in a few hours of work, and most of it was just a second grader learning how to type accurately and quickly, coming up with those interesting facts. And here you have it. So this is Adobe Spark page. This is done in less than five minutes because it's pretty straightforward. One of the things that's really incredible about this platform is how you can pull in your Adobe Spark posts, pull in your Adobe Spark videos into the content of Adobe Spark page, as well as those buttons and those images and all the credits with Adobe Spark page. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any questions, reach out to me on social. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check out the other videos on Adobe Spark post and video. Thanks for watching.